Hi, welcome to Left Foot Media. My name is Brendan Malone. Well, last week my channel hit another one of those uh, important little milestones that happens in the life of every YouTube channel. And at some point, I don't know exactly when, I managed to clock up 10,000 subscribers on the channel. And I know some of the train spotters out there who have been following my channel for a while and keeping an eye on the uh, sub count probably knew about this before I did. I know you're out there because I keep getting these encouraging little messages from you um, telling me uh, about how much you enjoy the content, even if you don't necessarily agree with everything, you like the content, you like the style of what I'm doing, and you think that I deserve more views, and I often get regular little reminders about where the sub count is up to uh, in those sorts of messages. A huge thank you, first of all, to everyone uh, who has subscribed to this channel and um, elevated it to this point. For me, this is pretty awesome. Um, this is just uh, me sharing my thoughts and views on uh, a lot of, I guess, social, political issues as well as movies and other things like that. I'm just a guy with a camera and a YouTube channel. And so it's pretty humbling that there's now over 10,000 people out there who consider the content that I'm producing worthy of their subscription. So um, thank you very much. Now, the thing is, though, I didn't actually notice that my channel had hit 10,000 subs last week, and the reason I didn't notice, and by the way, it was something I was actually looking forward to in the, in the preceding weeks. So I was sort of keeping an eye on the, on the sub count, and I could see it getting closer, and I was waiting for that eventual moment. It would tick over to, to 10,000 subs, and I had all these plans in my head. And then last Monday, unexpectedly, my father died. And so, as you can imagine, that just threw a complete spanner in the works for me. And all of a sudden, the furthest thing from my mind was how many people were subscribed to my YouTube channel. My father was a really good man, and uh, he's a man who left a really important legacy behind him in his life. He was only 70 when he died. For most of his adult life, uh, he had suffered from uh, the mental illness of schizophrenia, for those who have seen the movie A Beautiful Mind uh, with Russell Crowe and Jennifer Connelly, that's the same illness that my father had. I remember not long before my 12th birthday, just a couple of days before I turned 12, and he had one of his episodes, and he became quite delusional, and he thought that he was the next King of Ireland. And I remember him coming into uh, the bedroom that I shared with my brothers at the time, and he got us all out of bed, and he said, look, son, you're the eldest, so you're next in line to the throne. You and I are going to go and sit in the lounge while the rest of the serfs make breakfast for us. And I thought this was great sport when I was uh, almost 12 years of age. Um, but my father obviously suffered and experienced great difficulties as a result of that in his life, but he never complained about it. He never allow, he never allowed himself to be defined by that. And, and in fact, in many ways, he wore that difficulty as a badge of honor. I remember one time he was drop, dropping me off at high school one morning, and this guy yelled out across the, uh, the playground, um, your dad's a mental... And uh, my dad turned and looked at him and he said, yes, yes, I am. <laughs> and that guy, interestingly enough, that guy uh, became one of my best friends after that. But that was my dad. He always just owned it. He was never ashamed of it. He, he never hid away. He was never stigma stigmatized by his mental illness. In fact, he helped a lot of other people. I remember as a young man, uh, there were people who constantly were coming through our doors. And my dad was like a mentor to them. He really, you know, I guess taught them to, uh, to embrace and not to be ashamed of the difficulty of mental illness and to trust the doctors and to trust the processes and, and, and to, to do their best to get on the medication because mental illness, particularly permanent lifelong mental illness, uh, for a lot of people still carries a big stigma and it can be a really difficult cross for a lot of people to bear. Just the, the thought of even being on medication, uh, let alone the reality of what mental, mental illness is and what it entails, uh, yeah, for the rest of your life is a very difficult thing. As I said about my father at his uh, funeral when... Uh, us as children, he, he left behind six children, we all uh, presented a eulogy at his funeral and in my eulogy I said that um, no one will ever produce a biography, they'll never write a biography about my dad, uh, no one will make a blockbuster film about his life but despite that my dad lived a quiet but profoundly important greatness and what my dad did, he was such a good man, he was a man of virtue, a man of character, a man of uh, simple and straightforward uh, morality but morality that is really important and, and things like character and integrity and, and things like that were really important to him and as a result of who my dad was despite his difficulties despite the setbacks he experienced and despite the way that put limitations on him uh, my dad did something that most men in this life crave to do he left behind him a legacy that truly counts for something he really did change the world in profound ways by his presence and like I said there's lots of other men out there who are doing this quiet humble work who, who will never get popular attention 
my dad just happened to be one of them. And uh, the other thing I'm really grateful for, and I guess the reason why I have this channel actually, is because not only is my, my dad of Irish heritage, and so a good old-fashioned political stash where you speak your mind and you're not afraid to offend people is very much something that I inherited from him as well, but also my love of movies and storytelling. My dad was a big fan of westerns. He was a big fan of John Wayne, absolutely loved John Wayne, and had just about every John Wayne film that was ever made. And so... As a bit of a dedication to my dad over the next year, what I'd like to do is I've got some of his old movies now in my possession, and so I'm hoping to uh, re-watch them and produce uh, here and there throughout the year uh, just reviews of those classic westerns that, that my dad loved, and also perhaps to try and introduce you, my subscriber base, my audience, to perhaps one or two movies that you might not have heard of. I suspect I have at least one film that most people have never heard of or possibly never seen, which was a big part of my childhood and I think is probably well worth a watch. Uh, I haven't watched it in a few years so I might have to go back and watch it again just to make sure it's still as, as memorable and, and worthy of your time as I remember it but I'm hoping to do that as a little bit of a tribute to my father. So that's why last week obviously there was no content produced at all and that's why I just didn't even notice that 10,000 uh, subs had ticked over. Uh, the passing of my dad has left a big hole in my life obviously. Um, I'm grateful for family and friends who have been very supportive of myself, uh, my wife, uh, our kids, my mother, my extended family, my brothers and sisters and everyone else who, who is grieving the loss of my dad. And I'm sure there's plenty more grief to come. I know this week, now that the busyness of preparing a funeral, last week was a very busy week for me, now that the busyness of preparing my dad's funeral is all out of the way, we buried him on Monday, um, it, it's interesting how it just sort of, the reality set in a bit more about the fact that my dad, you know, the guy who was sort of the rock for me in my life and, and, and my family and the guy that... I really did like every little boy does, looks up to and idolises, he was gone, he's, he's, he's not coming back through that door again. And so that was, you know, there's that, that some really difficult moments in the last couple of days. The other thing I'm planning to do on my channel this year is to try and transmit and, and give to anyone who's interested the gift that my father gave to me, some of that really basic down-home country wisdom. My dad was originally a farmer, he grew up on a farm. And he had a lot of basic wisdom about living out an authentic, life-giving masculinity. And uh, so I, I've decided to create a few videos here and there. Because it's one thing to point out the problems with feminism, particularly toxic, toxic feminism. But it's another thing altogether to actually have a positive uh, and, and you know, strong and clear and positive proactive ideology that you're living out in your life. You, know, you can't live in the negative. You can't just be opposed to things. You've got to be proactively for something. And so I thought, uh, as a way, again, of honouring my father, I would spend some time this year unpacking what I think are some of the key essential elements of living out a healthy masculinity and, and why that really matters. Last week, though, one of the things I did in the busyness of all the funeral preparations is I jumped on the treadmill one morning because it was just hosing down with rain outside, so I couldn't go out for my usual walk that I do every day. So I jumped on the treadmill and I put on my earbuds and I watched a film on my laptop as I was working out on the treadmill. And it's a film I'd seen previously and, and sort of had slipped off my radar. I'd intended originally to do a review on this channel, but I just, I don't know what happened, just completely slipped off my radar. But I watched it again and man, it's such a good film. It's the movie Midnight Special uh, starring uh, Joel Edgerton, Michael Shannon, Kirsten Dunst uh, and uh, of course Kylo Ren, Adam Driver. Um, this is a really great and enjoyable film. This is a film that was released early in 2016, but it's a film that really just slipped under the radar and I think a lot of people either missed it or didn't really pick up on it. It's it's a, it was a smaller sort of more independent style film. Uh, it didn't have the big press and the and the big promo that the big blockbusters do. But man, it's a great little sci-fi film. It is to me, Midnight Special. Not only is it named after one of the two top uh, Credence Clearwater uh, revival songs ever written, so obviously Midnight Special. Uh, the other one is Fortunate Son. But it's a great example of simple but pretty solid storytelling. And uh, and great characters. It's it's just it's a solid little script. It's it's just I'm not going to uh, ruin too much of it for you if you haven't already seen it. But um, it's a story about and it starts right into the story. There's no mucking around. The pacing's really good. They don't give you unnecessary pointless backstory and details you don't need to know. They just start launch straight into the story. And you've got two guys who have a young boy who clearly is very special that they are travelling with and have uh, kidnapped or taken from somewhere else, and they are on the run from the government and from other groups as well. And so it's uh, it, it just launches straight in. That, that's a simple, straightforward kind of premise, and it just sort of follows from there. What I really loved about this film was 
everything makes sense. The motivations of the characters make sense. There's nothing really wasted in this movie. There's nothing superfluous. The way the script is written, everything adds to driving the plot and moving the story along. There's some great moments um, in this film. It, it's, it's almost a... In some ways, it's like the anti-blockbuster. Um, and what I mean by that is... If if you took this film and turned it into a modern blockbuster, you know, big budget blockbuster, blockbuster, it would be filled with all sorts of expositional dialogue. They would have to tell you. But this movie doesn't do that. This is a classic example of show, don't tell. It's got some great acting. And there's these great little moments in this film. So, for example, we know that one of the characters played by Joel Edgerton clearly has a military background. But in any other film, we would know that because they would tell it to us. They would spell it out with expositional dialogue, possibly even clunky expositional dialogue. But in this movie, we know that because, uh, because of a scene involving him and some nighttime driving and a pair of night vision goggles. And it's just a little simple cue that happens. It's a visual cue to tell you this guy has military experience. It's the simple things like that you really appreciate. There's a there's another moment in the film, actually towards the very beginning actually, where we learn about a group of, of people who are known as the ranch. And they're quite important to the story. But in any other movie, there would have been they mentioned they would have mentioned the name the ranch and then there would have been a clunky or maybe not so clunky, but a piece of expositional dialogue to tell us exactly who the ranch was. Oh, you mean the ranch that does X, Y, and Z. But they didn't do that. They just move on like normal people would if they're having a conversation. Uh, you know, people who actually knew who the ranch actually was, they wouldn't sit around explaining to each other, you know, what the ranch was. And this movie doesn't do that. It puts you in that sort of fly on the wall situation. And it says, OK, we're going to introduce you to this group called the ranch. We're going to tell you their name. And then sure enough, it doesn't take long. A few minutes later, you see for yourself who the ranch is, what it is they're referring to. It's such a great film like that. There's, there's another scene. I, oh, man, I really love this. A very short little moment but man it's a great example of good acting from Michael Shannon who is a very good actor and there's there's a scene where Joel Edgerton does something he agrees to do something with Michael Shannon and Michael Shannon does not say a word but the the camera holds on his face and there is a look in his eyes a look on his face which tells you everything about the depth of emotion and the profound emotion he is feeling right now towards Joel Egerton's character. And it's just a great example of acting. There's also another, I thought was quite a funny little moment where they, it's almost a nod to some of the, the tropes of modern blockbuster films where uh, one particular character asks to be handcuffed to make it look like he was sort of forced to go along with the plan. And then he says, can, can you punch me in the face as well? And this other character sort of looks at him like, why would I do that? And then, then this character turns and says, you know, of course, don't be silly. And it's this sort of, it's this little nod to the fact that, yeah, that would be a stupid thing to do. And yet everyone does it in blockbuster movies, yet it doesn't really make a lot of sense because it wouldn't really prove whether you're involved or not. And everyone now has seen that so many times. It's become such a trope that they probably would still suspect you of being involved anyway. Look, I love this film. It's, it's, it's layered. It's, as I said, it's simple. It's, it's not you know, it's not deep or complex. It's a simple, straightforward kind of chase pursuit movie. But the characterizations are great. The acting is great. And it's actually got many layers in it. It's, it's actually a film that you watch a couple of times and you see different things each time. So first of all, it is clearly a religious allegory. I think it's almost certainly a religious allegory for the story of Mary, uh, Joseph and uh, Jesus, the Messiah. And, and and you see that in the way it plays out. And there's definitely the sort of messianic overtones and the, the way it all happens. It, it seems pretty clear. And then you have this other group of people who are like the sort of uh, the Jewish religious leaders uh, uh, during the time of Christ and that, that, that early first century. And, and they are they clearly want to uh, possess this boy as a tool for power and, and they see him in that way. And it's it, it's clear there's a religious allegory. I think there is in here. And there's, But there's also not just that. This is not a simple, clunky, sort of um, dumb film. There's also other depth in there as well. I think you could easily view this film as a metaphor for childhood terminal illness because of the way the story is written and how it all plays out. And you've got parents with the boy and, and the whole thing of, you know, uh, what will happen to this boy and what's going to happen to him and how will the parents deal with that. On top of that, there's also a metaphor there for the way in which the state 
uh, perhaps can impose itself, even at times like this, whether it be terminal illness or other, and on other occasions, can try and impose itself on parents and families to try and dominate the decision making and control what actually happens, or, or perhaps not just the state, but other groups as well. So there's a whole metaphor there about parental rights, and and it does raise some interesting questions in a very sort of subtle way about well, where would the rights of parents lie in this situation versus the rights of the state, and how would that all play out? Look, if you haven't seen it. Watch Midnight Special. It, it is a great film. It is well worth your time. I highly recommend it. It's a simple story, but it's it's engaging and it, it really it starts start to pick up steam as it goes. The only disappointing thing for me was that they didn't actually feature, and I guess they didn't have the budget for this, but they didn't they didn't feature the Credence Clearwater uh, revival song uh, Midnight Special. That would have been just the icing on the cake for me, but perhaps also it wouldn't have sort of fit the tone of the film and the way it ends and stuff either. But there you go. If you've seen Midnight Special, please let me know what you think in the comments section below. As always, I'd love to hear your thoughts. And again, a huge thank you to everyone who has subscribed to this channel and helped to elevate it now past the 10,000 subscriber mark. If you like the content I'm producing and you'd like to see more of it, then please become a supporter of my channel on Patreon. There is a link in the description below and a link on screen now. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time on Left Foot Media.